Shalom. All praises to Yahweh Bashim Awashai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone. Those are the men that taught me the truth of the Bible through the Holy Spirit. And Yahweh Bashim Awashai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, Brakafam. To the elect of Israel that's scattered across the four corners of the globe. Now, what we're looking at here is an article from www.thesun.co.uk. And as you can see by the headline, we have a bombshell finding here. Right, and it's not a bombshell finding because of what they're saying it to be. It's more so of a bombshell finding onto us brothers that have this truth, right? This wisdom, this knowledge and understanding, and more so the faith in Yahweh Bashma Shai and his word, which is the Holy Bible. Right? This is a bombshell finding because what we're gonna read in this article aligns perfectly, and I mean perfectly, with the prophecies in the Holy Bible concerning the destruction of Babylon the Great, which is America. And Esau society as a whole, all right, which is going to take place during the time of World War III in the form of these nuclear ICBMs. So it says, bombshell finding nuclear war between the United States and Russia, which are the two major players that are going to fight in World War III. These two so called Edomite kingdoms, if you want to call it that, it says, nuclear war between the United States and Russia would blot out the sun for a decade. A decade is 10 years. As experts predict apocalyptic aftermath of World War III. Now, let's go to the first scripture in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord, whose name is Yahweh, answered me and said write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it for the vision is yet for an appointed time the vision or the prophecy of jacob's trouble jeremiah 30 verse 7 that vision is set for an appointed time the vision of the mark of the beast that the apostle john saw on the isle of patmos 2000 years ago of people taking an implantable microchip in their body that's set for an appointed time the vision of world war three the destruction of Babylon the Great America is set for an appointed time. The nuclear missiles being shot is set for an appointed time. The return of Yahweh Shai with the holy angels, that's set for an appointed time, man. On the time of Yahweh Bash Shai, 2nd Ezra chapter 4 verse 37, it says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end, at the end of Esau's rulership, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 9, the word world will lead you to the, the Greek word eon, meaning a, a time period or a rulership. But at the end, it shall speak. And we're living at the end and the prophecies are speaking loud and clear. And that's why there's all types of articles, all types of news regarding World War Three, nuclear destruction. So the prophecies are speaking loud and clear. It says, but at the end, it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry. Though it seems like it's delaying, though it seems like it's not here yet, wait for it. And that's the commandment. That's the commandment of Yahweh Bashmah Hashai unto us brothers that have this truth. We're to wait. The Lord said through Zephaniah, when he got to Zephaniah 3 verse 8, the Lord said, Therefore wait ye upon me until I rise up to the prey. The prey being Esau, Edom, and the rest of these heathen nations that have tormented our people. That's the commandment. The Lord said also in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, Yahweh Shai said, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. Yahweh Shai also said, Revelation 3 verse 10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. So the commandment is for us to wait and just keep doing this work until the end. It says, because it will surely come, the visions, the prophecies, they're going to surely come. Jacob's trouble is going to surely come. The microchip mark of the beast is surely going to come. The destruction of Babylon the Great, nuclear destruction is surely going to come. The deliverance when Yahweh Shai comes back with the holy angels, it will surely come, it will not tarry. And that's the point. So let's go into this article. It says, a nuclear war between the United States and Russia would envelope the planet in a decade of darkness, during which nearly all life on earth would perish. That's the cheery finding of a new scientific study in which experts envision the catastrophic aftermath of all-out nuclear war. And then they give you a, a brief illustration of this nuclear winter. 
that's going to take place as a result of these nuclear missiles being shot and launched. It says, catastrophic impact of all-out nuclear war. A study outlines the devastating environmental impact of an all-out nuclear war between the United States and Russia. The explosions and resulting fires would all but destroy all living things, which that's not true. Because when we go here to Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 4, it says, One generation passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. And then when you go to Ecclesiastes, I want to say it's chapter 4, and I believe it's at the end. Yep, this is Ecclesiastes 4 verse 16. It says, there is no end of all the people, even of all that have been before them. All right, so these scientists, they don't truly understand, you know, um, the devastation of nuclear war. I mean, it's going to be devastating, but it's not going to destroy every living thing on planet Earth. Various different parts of the world will be destroyed and a great population will be destroyed, but there's still going to be living things on planet Earth. Okay. But anyway, reading on down here, it says, It follows the decision earlier this month by US President Donald Trump to pull out of a decades-old nuclear treaty with Russia. And that's why the Apostle Paul made that statement unto the Israelites that were living in Thessalonia, Greece at the time, over 2,000 years ago. When you go to um, the first book of Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 3, the Apostle Paul roughly paraphrasing said, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. And the reason why he said that, which is really him prophesying in the spirit, is because all of these so-called nuclear treaties, these so-called peace talks that these countries are having with one another, they're going to come to no avail. Because the plan and goal of Yahweh Bashmah Shai is to destroy this current society by way of World War Three and nuclear missiles. That's the will of Yahweh Bashmah Shai, man. Now, it reads on to say, White House officials said Russia had been in material breach of the treaty and made no effort to come back into compliance. The new research was carried out by scientists at Rutgers University in New Jersey, USA, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. They predicted the impact of nuclear war on the planet using climate models based on the effects of soot and ash coughed up by recent forest fires and volcanic eruptions. And then they give you another illustration here, which is pretty much what the prophets of old saw in their visions, you know, such as the prophet Isaiah. You know, he saw this in his vision. As a matter of fact, let's prove that by going to Isaiah 34, 34, and I want to say verse 4, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, this is Isaiah 34, verse 4. It says, And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. So pretty much what the Lord showed Isaiah in a vision concerning this nuclear destruction was a nuclear mushroom cloud, as you see here in the illustration. And Isaiah re recorded it. But let me read it again. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. So that scroll that he basically saw was this nuclear mushroom cloud. Okay. It says... And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree. And I'll read verse 5 for edification's sake. It says, For my sword, and this is speaking about the Heavenly Father's sword, which is going to come in form of these nuclear missiles. It says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven because these nuclear missiles are going to be launched and shot into space. And that's where they're going to, you know, accelerate, so to speak. It says, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. And Idumia is Greek for Edom. Edom being the Edomites. The Edomites being you so-called white people. All right. It says, and upon the people of my curse. Because you Edomites have the curse of Cain. Because you're the descendants of Cain. Who was reincarnated as Esau Edom. Who became the progenitor of the Edomites. That curse being the curse of leprosy which today you call it vitiligo. You see, in the days of old, when Cain was on the scene, the heavenly father, Yahweh, who you ignorantly call God, placed a mark upon Cain, which is the mark of leprosy, and he stripped Cain of his pigmentation. And that's why today you so-called white people don't have no brown skin. 
That's why your blood shows forth through your skin because you're translucent as a people, which ties in with your name, Edom, because Edom in the Hebrew means red, right? From the Hebrew word Adawam, which is pretty much a nomen omen for who you are as a people, the red people. That's your true biblical nationality, the Edomites, Adawam Yam. Now, back in this article, it says, much like massive wildfires and eruptions, it's predicted that multiple nuclear blasts would throw up enough smoke to blot out the sun. This is biblical prophecy. I'm going to prove it right now by going to Isaiah, the 13th chapter. This is Isaiah 13, verse 1. It says, the burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. And this Babylon that the prophet Isaiah saw thousands of years ago in a vision it wasn't speaking about ancient Babylon because ancient Babylon is in modern day Iraq, which is still present. Okay. And this Babylon that's being spoken about here is going to be destroyed by way of fire. And it's speaking about Babylon, the great America, which the word Babylon goes back to the Hebrew word Baba, which means confusion. And why is America a cesspool of confusion, a melting pot of confusion? Well, first and foremost, the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashmah and Shai that you find written about in the Holy Bible they're not being upheld here in America. That's why you've got a high rate of homosexuality. That's why you have a high rate of transgenderism. That's why you have a high rate of so-called women's liberal rights, okay, which is all confusion. And then on top of that, you have the confusion of the true Hebrew Israelites that dwell here in America collectively, you know, pursuant to Jeremiah 50 verse 33, where you've got so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, the house of Israel and the house of Judah being oppressed together, bugged out, they don't know who they are, you know, they call themselves African Americans, they call themselves Puerto Ricans, they call themselves Dominicans, Mexicans, Seminole Indians, North American Indians, so on and so forth. And then they're all up in these wayward philosophies and religions, beginning with Christianity, Islam, Santeria. And then on top of that, you have the confusion of these other nations that dwell here in America, whether it be the so-called Chinese man, the so-called Indian man, the so-called Hawaiian man the so-called African man. All of these heathens dwell here in America and they're keeping their various different customs, worshiping false idols, false gods, speaking their various different languages, which is why America is known in the Bible as Babylon, but Babylon the Great, because this is the place of great confusion. Now let's jump down to verse 10, which this is where the point is at concerning um, this article and how the nuclear missiles or the result of these nuclear missiles is going to blot out the sun because of the nuclear cloud that you see here. This is Isaiah 13 verse 10. It says, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Why is that? Because of these ICBMs. All right, they're going to create thick clouds. That's why the Bible refers to this day as being a day of darkness and gloominess. Let's get that real quick in the book of Joel. Joel chapter 2, verse 2, it says, A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. And the reason why this is going to be a day of darkness, gloominess, a day of clouds, as you see here in the illustration, is because of these ICBMs that are going to be shot and launched all over the globe during the time of world war three okay so we finish there in isaiah 13 now let's jump to zephaniah 1 verse 14 it says the great day of the lord yahweh by shemiah is near it is near and hasteth greatly even the voice of the day of the lord yahweh the mighty man shall cry there bitterly verse 15 that day is a day of wrath a day of trouble and distress a day of wasteness and desolation because America is going to be utterly destroyed, 100% desert. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. You see, the prophet Joel saw the same thing as Zephaniah. Zephaniah saw the same thing as Joel and Isaiah, so on and so forth, man. All the prophets saw the, the vision of the days that we're living in right now concerning the nuclear destruction, concerning the downfall of Esau's kingdom, concerning the destruction of Babylon the Great America. Now, um, let's read on here. It says, this would result in devastating agricultural losses and the collapse of the summer monsoon season. The
The study lines up with a 2007 climate model that also predicted what would happen in the aftermath of a nuclear war. Despite having different features and capabilities, both models produce similar results, researchers wrote in the new paper. Nuclear winter with below freezing temperatures over much of the northern hemisphere during summer occurs because of a reduction of surface solar radiation due to smoke lofted into the stratosphere. Now, let's go to Revelation 14 and I'll read from verse 9. And this is a vision that the Apostle John saw on the Isle of Patmos over 2,000 years ago concerning this nuclear destruction and the mark of the beast, which is the implantable microchip. It says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, the beast being this new revised Roman Empire coming in the form of NATO and the EU, which is being spearheaded by America, America being that whore that sitteth upon the beast, it says, if any man worship the beast and his image, and the image is speaking about this system, this overall society which is based upon the ancient pagan Roman Empire, right? This whole society is basically a spitting image of ancient Rome, if you can receive it. It says, if any man worship the beast and his image, so in other words, if any man or woman wholeheartedly gives their mind, body, and soul over to this government in the form of an implantable microchip, which is the mark, which is going to say here and receive his mark which when you go into this word mark in the greek you're going to find the greek word karagma which means an imprint so to speak which an imprint is synonymous with an implant and then when you go further into that word karagma when you go to the root word you're going to find the word karax which basically means a stake or a palisade so to speak so it's something physical that's going to be implanted in someone's skin and it's going to be that implantable microchip okay it says and receive his mark in his forehead, the forehead being the brain, or in his hand. Verse 10, and here's the judgment. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, and his name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And that's a metaphor for the nuclear destruction, right? The word indignation means righteous anger, and Yahweh Bashmah Shai is going to have a righteous anger towards you Israelites that receive that chip. Because right now the Lord is warning you not to take that chip, not to receive the mark of the beast by way of his servants, the prophets, beginning with the apostles and the elders and the men of Great Millstone. So if you go ahead and take that chip, then you're going to receive this nuclear destruction as judgment. It says, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, which that fire and brimstone is going to come in form of these nuclear missiles. And when Yahweh Shai returns with the holy angels in what people will ignorantly call UFOs, because these UFOs are going to shoot out laser beams. It says, in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the Lamb is speaking about our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, who people out there even call Jesus Christ, who was and is the ultimate sacrifice for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel only, our so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, primarily the elect of our people, because Yahweh Shai is only going to come back and gather his, his elect. Matthew 24 verse 31 told you that. Now here's the point in verse 11, it says, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And that's not literally speaking about for eternity, it's speaking about for a period of time. As you see in this article, these so-called experts predict that it's going to be for about a decade, which is 10 years. Nuclear war between US and Russia would blot out the sun for a decade. So it's not literally going to be forever and ever. It's going to be for a long period of time where smoke is going to be ascending into the heavens. Revelation 14 and 11, again it says, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Verse 12, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh, by Shemel Shai, and the faith of Yahweh Shai. And the faith is a gift. That's why us brothers need to cherish this gift, the ability to understand these scriptures and go out there and teach these scriptures. Now let's close this out with this last scripture from Revelation 19 verse 1. It says, And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our power. Yahweh Bashem Shai. Verse 2, For true and righteous are his judgments, for he have judged the great whore, which is America, that sitteth upon the beast, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, 
her spiritual fornication, her spiritual adultery coming in the form of her so-called democracy, her so-called women's liberation, her so-called human rights. Man can sleep with another man, a woman can marry another woman, right? You can worship any God out there. And that's just a few examples of spiritual wickedness and spiritual adultery, spiritual fornication that America has committed. And this is why the Lord is going to judge America in these last days by way of this nuclear destruction. It says, and have avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. All right? And this is how you know the servants, the prophets of Yahweh Bashmah Shai are here in America and around the world, but primarily over here in North America, Babylon the Great. Verse 3, it says, and again they said, Alleluia. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. So all praises, honors, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakar Kodash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, and Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakar Kodash, Barakatham, to the elect of Israel. Shalom.